So in today's video, we are going to do a deep dive into the Spark streaming checkpoint. If you are planning to take any job to production, it is really important to understand the role of a checkpoint in a Spark streaming job. We are going to talk about three topics today. We are going to do a comparison between a stateless job versus a stateful job. And then we are going to finally talk about hey, what is inside the state store. If you're new to this channel, hey folks, I'm Sony. I'm a data engineer and a data architect with 10 years of experience across Amazon, AWS and Databricks where I learned the techniques on how to work with big data systems. Uh, I've been taking Spark applications production since 2015 and on this channel I'll teach you how you can upskill and help land your dream job in tech. Be free to ask me questions on the YouTube live chat and I'll keep answering them as they come in. Okay, let me walk you through the notebook. On top of the notebook there are a bunch of uh, parameters like what is our Kafka server, What's the topic name which we're trying to read? What is the target? In this example, we are reading from Kafka and then writing to a delta table. You can change the source and target to Kafka to Kafka, right? Read from delta, write to delta. The concepts don't materially change much. And then we have our checkpoint location defined. If you're not aware of it, dbutils.secret is a very good library where you can store your credentials. And that's the recommended way as well to store and get back credentials. So in my example, I'm storing my Kafka API key and secret and getting those values back. I wrote a simple function which just formats a JSON. So we are going to read a couple of files, like we are going to read the metadata file, offset file, and this function is just going to pretty print it. We have a bunch of um, Spark, PySpark imports happening. So this code is basically reading from Kafka, and then we are going to write back to Delta table. Here you would see that I have defined the checkpoint location and now is where we start. So what we are going to do is basically going to do like FSLS, which is listing the checkpoint folder. And if you list the checkpoint folder, you will find four to five folders inside it. Let's first look at the metadata folder. So if you run this command, which tells FS head, you will be able to read the top part of your file. And if you read this file, you will get the ID inside it this is your spark streaming id when our streaming job is running you'll find this id here if you go to your databricks cluster or your spark cluster and click the structured streaming tab you'll also find the id here if you click the run id you'll find the id right on top this helps you basically figure out which spark streaming id are we talking about again it's unique to the cluster so you'll only have one of that on the cluster also i think it's a uu id so it anyway would be unique so what does the metadata folder tell us it's just telling us the spark streaming id now let's look inside the sources folder so inside the sources folder we are running this command which is fsls which is just listing the sources folder if you list the sources folder we are only able to find one source in it so sources slash zero and if you do uh, a listing of zero that's zero folder you will find uh, a file which ends with zero zero or well, one question comes to mind is why do we have sources slash zero that's because you can have multiple streaming sources so you can have two sources for an example if you're doing a stream to stream join then you'll have two sources this naming convention basically helps with that anyway let's go ahead and read a zero slash zero folder inside sources if you read this zero slash zero folder you're going to find the topic name so this is the kafka topic which we're reading from as specified in the top of the file our kafka topic has six, six partitions thus you will find six rows here this is representing partition number zero partition number three partition number five zero colon zero means for the zeroth partition we're going to read data so starting at 0th sequence number so every topic every partition inside kafka every message has a sequence number attached to it or you can think of them as offset numbers we have this topic as the source which has six partitions and we are going to start reading them from the zero location now this can be changed if you go to our code, we said start from reading the earliest offset. If you change this to latest and then you restart, this input would change. Okay. 
so that's where you see the impact right now we have covered two folders the sources folder and the metadata folder now let's understand the offsets folder and the commits folder offsets folder is the one which has the most amount of details we are just listing the offsets folder any time a spark streaming job runs it basically creates a new offset file right now the latest offset file is 600 you can sort this data on the modification timestamp we are seeing 600 commits have happened using this checkpoint and the latest commit is 600 now before i show you what is inside the offsets file i want to also just quickly show you the commits file for every offset for every micro batch which is processed there's a offset file created and correspondingly a commits file is created when spark streaming starts reading data it writes the offset file after the data is committed a commits file is created in our case commit 600 so this numbers would always match up if there is offset 600 there would be a corresponding commit 600 if there is offset 599 there would be a corresponding commit 599 now what happens if you kill the job in between whereas the offset file is created but the commit file is not created that means that micro batch did not success successfully finish and when the next time the spark streaming job runs it's going to figure out that is offsets and commits in sync and if they're not that means the last offset did not have a corresponding commit the next run is going to try to process the same offset file and try to create the corresponding commit so that's the relationship between offset and commit which is offset files and commits file are always in sync and offset is created as an entry to say we are going to process whatever is written in the offset file and the commit is created after the data is committed so let's look at the commits file first because that's very easy so if you open a commits file what you are going to find not much in this case it's just storing a watermark which is at zero seconds because it's a stateless job we'll get into what is stateless what is stateful in a, in a, in a minute or two but right now you have seen what is inside the commits file what is the relationship between offsets and commits file what is inside the sources file so the sources file just stored what topic name what was the partition number and what was the offset number inside that partition the metadata folder was just storing the spark streaming id the commits folder was almost empty it just had the watermark timestamp sec second in it and now we get to the main thing which is what is inside this offsets folder so like i said offset retains what are we going to process so if you open this offset it's trying to process data the latest message for sample data stock traits which is our topic name in partition 2 the latest message is 824 8420 and for partition 5 is 25072 look at offsets 599 that's going to have more detail So offset 599 finished at for partition 2 it finished at 8408 and offset 600 is finishing at 8420. So as part of processing this micro batch number 600 we are trying to process data between 8408 and 8420 for partition 2. For partition 5 we are trying to process data between 25035 and 25072. So that's what we are trying to do in this micro batch. This offset folder is very important because it's storing what needs to be processed as part of the current micro batch. You can look at spark shuffle partitions. You can look at the watermarking policy. So first topic is covered on what is inside a checkpoint. There are four to five things inside a checkpoint. Commits folder, a metadata folder, offset folder and sources folder now in the description it said four to five i'll tell you why if you look at this job this was our read from kafka and write to delta job and you see this graph there are only two graphs it has an input rate processing rate and batch duration this does not have a concept of state 
meaning um the checkpoint is not storing much information it's just storing hey till what offset do i need to read and what have i written so far that's all it needs to remember now let's add the concept of state so now we are going to create another job and this is going to have the concept of state the code is very similar with the previous example except this has two extra lines so we are adding a watermarking policy where we are saying watermark the keys with a timestamp of one minute and then we are saying drop duplicate within watermark here is a query which is saying when we read data from kafka if there are duplicates on the partition and offset combination and if those duplicates arrive within a minute then let's drop those rows so in this example we have developed the concept of state and I'll, I'll show you in a minute when we start this job the graph is going to look different now we're going to have three graphs previously remember we had the input rate the processing rate the batch duration now we'll have th another graph which is the aggregated state because by the way this this is an example of a state full job where there is a state involved and the previous was the example of a stateless job where the checkpoint has no state so you won't see the state graph here okay a stateful job and a stateless job so the state job has a state attached to it if we list the checkpoint for this streaming query you will see five folders previously we saw four folders now we see this additional folder which has the state what is the state? Your checkpoint is trying to remember something. In our case, uh, we asked our checkpoint to remember this. To not allow any duplicates on partition on offset column with the watermark of one minute. Meaning it's going to remember this um, partition offset combination for a minute. You can change this to 10 hours. You can change this to 72 hours. But it's highly recommended that you have a watermark attached to a state. The reason is the state will keep increasing forever example you process ads in that case the id will never be duplicate right or shouldn't be duplicate now a way to enforce that you never get a duplicate is that you can add this drop duplicates with watermark on an id and set a watermark for 72 hours that way you your code or spark streaming would not process any duplicates when a new row comes it's going to just ignore that row because it has seen that row before so that's the concept of state so that's how you use it now let me show you a few more things you should understand when you're running a streaming job in production one thing you should take care of is the processing rate should always be greater than the input rate another thing which is even more important than the previous one is there's a metric over here which is going to be max offsets behind latest so here is your metric max offsets behind latest this metric for all spark streaming jobs should either be consistent or always be dropping that means how much ever data is being produced in kafka how far is our spark streaming job for that data so essentially this is saying if your input is producing faster than how much we are able to process that means your job is falling behind which we don't want that is why max offsets behind should always be falling down that will ensure your streaming job remains healthy that you don't fall behind all the good stuff another thing which you can look in this when your streaming job is running is that you can see almost all of the details here if you click on this raw data arrow you see your spark streaming id your input rate process rate your sources so whatever was your source for this batch which we are processing what is the starting offset what is the end offset and where is kafka setting at so latest offset just represents where is the kafka set what else do you need to know specifically for state operations you want to see this number of rows dropped by watermarks. If you have set a watermarking policy, this means that the older keys are being removed from the watermark. So that's why this should always have a value. This basically prevents 
that the state to grow infinitely large. So that's what this one XU shows. Uh, there is also the state operators. So in our case, the only state operation which we are using is drop duplicates within watermark. So that's why this number is there. Now let's go to turn the third topic. So the third topic is how do you read what's inside the state store? Now let's try to understand what's inside the state folder. So we saw here there was a state folder. If you list the state folder, you'll find state underscore zero. Let's list that. Let's see what's inside it. So if you open this state folder, essentially you will find six more folders. That's because our state is divided into six different parts. State is divided into six parts because we had six partition. And then we are looking at the first part within the let's say partition one of the state so you are seeing there's a delta table inside the state what's happening which is inside your state folder you'll no, it will match the number of shuffle partitions you have and it will divide the state into those many parts in our case six parts if you open any one of these folders you will find a delta table inside given that there is a delta table inside the checkpoint you should limit the state on how much you store. You can do that by setting a watermark. Now, how do we read this data? This gets us into the topic three for today's discussion, which is how do you read the state folder? So Databricks has two APIs on how you can query the state data. Here we are going to do a spark.read.format. They have a special format called state store. We are going to provide it a checkpoint location. As soon as we provide this location, we get our state store data frame. We can see what is inside the state store. So it's saying for partition ID zero, remember our state was divided into six parts. We have this key and this value. This is coming from our code. In our code, we said drop duplicates with watermark for partition and offset. So it's storing every partition and offset value it saw and attaching a timestamp to it. So that's what you will see in the state store. Also, it's saying my key is partition value is this offset value is this, and this is going to expire at this timestamp. This is the epoch timestamp. Then you have the partition ID zero. When we are writing code, sometimes we want to see what Spark has stored within its checkpoint. That's where this state store comes into play. Remember our data was divided into six parts uh, because we had six partitions. You should count the number of rows within each partition and make sure that these partitions are balanced. That's the way to ensure that you don't have skew in your data. And if you have skewed partition, obviously your processing is going to be slow because one partition is going to have more data. Your task is basically going to take longer because if you have six partitions and one is overloaded, so this is the usefulness of this spark read dot format state store, which is it helps you open the state store and see what is stored inside it. Are the partitions balanced or not? So that's why it's useful. Another thing you can see is we have a state metadata dot read format state metadata. You can see the name of the state store. What was the operation in our case? Our stateful operation is drop duplicates within watermark. What was the number of partitions, which was six? What was our minimum match ID? What is our max match ID? Stuff like that. So that's how things come together. Hopefully it makes sense. If not, feel free to ask questions. So if you're new to streaming, then you would like to watch my first lecture on Spark streaming. The link would be somewhere down below. And I'm also running a live lecture series on Spark streaming where videos are coming out every other week. If you would like to get in touch, you can find me on Substack under the name Canadian Data Guy. See you, folks.